Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee, the Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Potomac Season 4, Episode 17. It is 5, 22 in the morning. And for the past hour, I've been sitting here working on all this stuff like, oh, I'm going to do Potomac tomorrow, I'm going to do Potomac tomorrow. But I want to sleep in tomorrow because it's so late. And, you know, I'm like, let me get it done today. Plus, I got gossip chat to do tomorrow. But let's get started on this video. I felt like this episode wasn't that much, but we know the next week is the season finale. If you have not done so already, please come on to subscribe to my channel. And become a... It's girl, Jaybird. Dot, 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 dot. And all that goodness, okay? Like the video. Comment on the video. Share the video. You can follow me on IG at j underscore leads underscore corner the link for that is in the description box below so we see all the ladies are gathering because giselle then told katie and candace girl told ashley and candace that katie is missing katie is gone her room is empty her door was unlocked her door was open the clothes are gone the closet is empty she, where is she they talking like she, this is the weird part that frustrated me. Giselle is so, oh, something must be wrong. Why wouldn't she talk to anyone? What's going on? If But she hasn't checked out. If you go to someone's room and all their stuff is missing and they're gone, they left. Okay, if now if she would have said our stuff is there, but no one can find her and her door was open. Okay, then, then that's different. But I'm like... Clearly, she left when Candace then says, but we saw her last night and she had her coat and scarf on. She was leaving last night. She's got girl anyway. But I'm like, why ain't nobody asking production where she at? I, that's that's what I would say. Giselle then calls Robin. As Robin, she talked to Robin's like, no. Then Karen walks up. But can she text you? Karen's like, no. But I talked to her. Y'all think we saw her last? We saw her last night. She was she had a coat and hat on or whatever. So I, I she may have left. And if she left, I'm not surprised that she left because you're saying, I saw the pain on her face after Ashley berated her with that inhumane, you know, antics. I'm looking like, Karen, girl, calm down. It's not Ashley's fault that she left. It's not, in my opinion. You know, Giselle want to find, I just have to find out where she at. I don't know. You know, Oh, if she wanted to leave, it's fine. But why didn't she tell somebody? I'm like, because she's a grown woman. Okay, so Robin comes out and Robin calls Jacob and uh, Candace, Ashley, and Karen. Like, girl, have fun. We ain't got time for that. Because, again, they like, she left. We don't, you know, she, she she left and she don't talk to nobody. So, when Robin calls Jacob, who was Katie's boyfriend, he like, well, I'm, I'm upset or whatever. But, and, well, is everything okay? Like, we haven't talked to Katie. Like, have you talked to her? He said, well, the last time I talked to her, it was, last, you know, yesterday at midnight. So, that's, you know, she just said she wasn't feeling too well. So, I don't know. But if, I, if we figure out anything, I'll call, I'll, I'll call and let you know. Robin and Giselle then go to the front, the front desk of the hotel and says, can we file a missing persons report? I'm like, first of all, you ask the police that, okay? You don't ask the front desk receptionist at the hotel that question. But she then says, your security team said they found her. So you may want to just go talk to them. I'm like, again, why was nobody asking production a question? If you think something wrong to file a missing persons report, talk to production, period. So, Scrooge didn't say we talked to her. Where, where was she at? At the airport. Okay. The producer then walks up and said we talked to her as well. You know what I'm saying? And she left. Okay. She booked another. She she changed her flight. So basically, because Katie left, and when she changed her flight, that notified production she was leaving. So they knew she was going, and they just they let her go. I'm like. <sighs> Why wouldn't she talk to us? You know, I can't believe, you know what I'm saying? She wouldn't just tell us. Why, again, why didn't you ask production? Katie is a grown woman, okay? Grown adult woman with her own kids, her own life. Giselle, it was, to me, it was too much like, oh my God, something wrong. Well, no, she just left. We then see they have a bunch of fun activities, okay? They're out there horseback riding, even though Katie's not, why well, keep on saying Katie? Even though, um, Ash say she's not going to go horseback riding because she does not like, you know, using animals in that way to where you're using them for, like, fun and, you know, they're as, you're using them as, like, 
tools or whatever. I don't know what word she said. <laughs> Giselle, Giselle didn't say, well, how you feel like people eating kangaroo? <laughs> it made me laugh. And I'm like, girl, it's two different things. I can understand someone who's like, I'm not going to ride no horse because I don't want to be using the horse as Jim said, uh, be using it to, you know, for manual labor. But if I want to, you know what I'm saying, um, a, a chicken wing, I, I'm not going to go ride the chicken. I'm going I'm to eat chicken. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna eat the food. I can see the difference between the two, but I I, I don't care. I won't ride a horse because I don't want to hurt my vagina. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to still eat some chicken. I'm not, I'm not going to eat no kangaroo, but I'll eat some chicken. So we then see there, okay, they get there. So as you don't want to ride the horses, Giselle got on the horse. She's like, I'm nervous. Mm -mm, I'm nervous. And because her horse was like, snapping at another horse was it her horse that was snapping at another horse was a karen's horse somebody's horse but Giselle got off it don't feel right oh, it was karen was later it don't feel right so she gets off so her and assy just walks to the beach and they're walking in the water as the other ladies are walking in the water on the horses they're riding the horses in the water um mm -hmm. but just karen's horse starts beefing with my else's horse you know what i'm done let me out because she didn't want the horse to like knock her into the water because they were like deep in the water you know what i'm saying you know if you can't swim i wouldn't want to be over there either so we see that that was fine you know they all have fun uh we then see they do two separate activities where assy robert and karen go to explore some caves they had bats in there uh-uh nope no no ma'am no thank you no sir no 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 okay and we see giselle and candace go to an underwater submarine excursion okay and everyone had a good time i think because they were separate, okay? You, you, you keep sometimes separate is good. You know what I'm saying? So we do see Giselle and Candace talking on the way back. And, you know, she brings up how, you know, with me and Ashley had a great time at yoga or, you know, the other morning or whatever. You know what I'm saying? A good time was had by all. Oh, really? Well, that's great. So, you know what? I went into it, you know, letting go of what happened before or whatever, even though I'm still worried about what's going on with her and Michael. And this is the one of the two times, I think, this episode that I completely appreciated Giselle. She said, you know what? At some point, you know, that's. None of our business. Like, at some point, we need to support her and wherever she is with that. We can't keep wondering and worrying and, 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 and making that an issue, okay? At some point, it's none of our business. Well, I guess you're right. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'm like Karen sometime, and I can just hold a grudge or, or hold on to something. You can, but, girl, don't hold on to something that's none of your business. Anyway, so I'm going to work on that. Please do. Please do. So we do see in the car, Robin is asking Karen about, oh, so, you know, you're going to have the whole, you know, the uh, Dom launch or whatever. Are you going, but what do you want to, what do you see the La Dom in like five years? And Karen got so like, uh, her whole face lit up. I hope like, you know, being so like in some national chain, I, I really hope that's what, that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's not, that's what I want. It's like, it's like my baby. Oh, so you're going to have like, you know, other things besides like the roll on. Like, are you going to have like an actual perfume soon? He says, she says, well, I, I do have that now. Whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. Rob in her confession said, you know what? Karen wants so bad to prove us wrong or whatever. I'm like, Robin, have you sold that half duplex? Have you proved yourself? Have you remarried one? You can't talk about Karen's wants and and businesses or whatever because you it took you ten months to flip a half duplex that should have been four months. This hush puppy, Robin. Okay, hush it. Anyway, we do see at dinner day Facetime Monique. Who's still at home pregnant? Okay. Um. Oh, I miss you guys. Where's Where's Katie? Where's, where's Katie? Oh, well, it was a situation. You know, she kind of got into it with Anthony or whatever. So, like, she eventually left because she kind of felt some kind of way or whatever. So, they kind of make it seem as if as is the, it's the sole reason that Katie left. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, no, honey. No, no, babe. Katie's grown. Kate, Katie, she's an adult. You know, it's, it's not on me. And I agree. Was Ashley mean to that girl? Absolutely. But I also feel like Ashley and, and Katie were going back and forth. Ashley just won. And she said, one step too far. Saying that Katie wasn't emotionally stable. But it was true. And they was ignoring it. 
Period. Okay. Anyway, so you know they hang up from Monique or whatever. It was fine. So you know Giselle then with you, Karen. I did not like how you try to make it seem as if on the beach that it was completely Ashley's fault that you know Katie left. Yeah, I can't believe that you said that. Well, I saw how hurt she was, and I told y'all before. I felt like what she said to her was inhumane. You know what I'm saying? It was too much, and I saw it on her face. I I I got it. You know. This is my thing. Katie came on that trip and she was not in the right frame of mind. I thought, you know what I'm saying? Again, I think her and Assy was giving it to each other. Period. Okay. So, Katie brings up how she does realize that she was, she know that she did not handle the situation in the best way. And, I, you know, she's like, considering how fragile Katie was in those moments, you know, I went too far. And she did. Again, she went too far. But I feel like it wasn't as if Katie's innocent, this innocent, fragile, delicate flower, that if you blow too hard, the leaves gonna fly away. And Karen, like, look, Katie is a quiet storm, okay? She is very intelligent or whatever. You know, she, she it was just, it was just too heavy for her right now, and she left. I agree, okay? Katie was not in the best frame of mind to be there for whatever the reason may be. She, period. Period. So they then bring up how, um, I don't know how they got into the conversation of Karen and some events she was at, and her and Ray was kissing, and it was nasty because they was all in each, other, in, in each other's mouths. And Karen brings up how, well, when I kiss him, I have tongue control. I think tongue control. So she then made her tongue be like, you know, I, I can't do it. But she did this weird thing with her tongue or whatever, you know, so this is how you control it. So, like, so, you know, my husband don't stick his, his tongue down my throat because I be, like, sucking his tongue. I'm like, what? Karen, no. Stop. Just, just stop. And the conversation went there. The other ladies made the same tongue movement, moving or whatever. But at this point in time, they're having fun. They're all laughing. A good time is being had by all or whatever. You know, Karen, like, I've been married a long time. You know what I'm saying? I can do this or whatever. And then she looks like, I don't have no, I don't have no itches now. I can, I don't have to keep it in. No, you don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Leave it alone. So, we then see they're all taking shots and just having a good time, okay? Laughing, talking, laughing, talking, no one's arguing. It's a good time being had by all. So, they get back to the room and they're all a little bit intoxicated. You then see that the cameras are all sat with the girls have all went into the hotel. And, you know, but you just hear the audio. And Karen, you hear Karen's audio and Athie's audio and, you know, whatever else. Karen goes, I'm, I just want to talk to you real quick. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say. And I think Karen forgot she was still mic'd, period. You know, I, I I hold on to things sometimes or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I needed Michael to be vindicated. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the charge has been dismissed isn't him being vindicated. I just, he wasn't vindicated. So I feel like in a way, he is, you know, he still has that over his head or whatever. And then, they in the in the lobby, Candace like not Candace asked like what, what what are you serious like what are you what are you talking about so their voices are being raised and Candace like look we could not be in this lobby again fussing and fighting or they are didn't complain about us being in this lobby being loud like let's go up so they're trying to lead ladies upstairs because they're arguing as they're walking upstairs or whatever so basically Ash is confused she's like why. Are we talking about this? Like, what? Where does it even come from? But again, Karen is drunk. You can tell Karen is so drunk she doesn't get that she's not being friendly. She's 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 on ten. She's on ten. She's not aggressive with it at all. But she is still teen too much for no reason, basically. And then she, I don't want to be fake and phony. Okay, I don't want to be fake and phony. And due to what I went through, I find you know I feel some kind of way, and not how I need him to be vindicated. So she feel like because of her situation, I know what happens to Karen. She said, you know, any Michael admitted that it was that he, you know, that it was it was contact and contact without consent is not okay. Karen is in her feelings based on what she went through. I think it has less to do with Michael, what Michael actually did and what she went through and it's how the situation itself makes her feel. You know what I'm saying? And Ashley was like, what? You're crazy? Why are you talking about this? That's why you don't have friends? And I'm like, okay, y'all both is being too much. And 
Everyone like, well, calm down, you know, one at a time, like, don't do so. And, well, I might, you know, Katie might be, might be sad, but you're broken. And I'm looking like, why are y'all, it, it went from zero to a hundred so quick for no reason. I think Karen has every right to feel how she feels about Michael's charges being dismissed. My thing is, we cannot get to a point to where we really feel like, if someone charges a drop, we can continually always be like, but you did it, though. Like, we don't know if that person, there's not even enough proof to say he did it. It's literally a he say, he say situation. The only time I feel like you can like, you know what, that person did it, is if there is some clear-cut evidence. Then, if there's any kind of clear-cut evidence, if there's any kind of proof beside a he say, she say, and if someone tries to get dropped, you have to kind of let it go. But Karen can't because of what Karen has went through in her past or whatever. And I can really get that. But I'm like, this is the wrong place, wrong time. Like, it wasn't a reason to bring it up. I don't want to be fake and phony. Girl, I, I, I feel like the argument was stupid. I feel like Karen could have still felt how she felt and not brought it up in the way that she did. But again, that's what happens sometimes when somebody's drinking or whatever. Um, Ken's like, you know, well, me and, me and Karen was talking or whatever, and, you know, we felt like Michael should not have done that interview about whatever, you know, happened with him. And you know said we wondered why the cameraman said, you know, don't do that if nothing happened. I think anybody, look, I am not defending Michael in any way, shape, or form. What I'm trying to do is play, you know, devil's advocate and be like, People act like a person don't lie. People on either side. People act like you can't walk past someone and you can touch them and they can say, don't do that. And you wasn't trying to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like just to be on an even playing field, it's literally he say, he say. No one saw anything. All we heard was a, don't do that. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? My bad. That's it. He say, he say. I don't care. I don't. Because I feel like I I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. The charges, I don't care. I, I, I don't know what else to say about that. So, at the end of the day, you know, Candace say how her and Karen, you know, still don't feel Michael is innocent. And that's completely fine. What you cannot do is make... Ashley feel like she has to feel like her husband is guilty in order for y'all to feel vindicated. That's what that's the part that I don't like. They want to feel vindicated and Ashley agreeing with them and saying her husband ain't this and ain't that. And that's dumb because none of them would do that for their own spouse. And that's the bullshit that I don't have time for. So we do the next morning and Giselle and Karen talk. Karen is sober now, whatever. And Karen, like, do you want to talk about, you know, what set Athy off? Just like, you mean what set you off? <sighs> that uh, I wasn't that. She's like, yes, you were. I just brought up how I felt about Michael and what was going on, whatever. And she just went off. And Giselle was like, you know what? You know, me and Robert have both had conversations with Athy about Michael on separate occasions or whatever. And she did not react that way. She said, however, you came at her. Like, you know, nah, 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 nah. And it was just kind of crazy or whatever. And you, I, I'm, I'm not that kind of woman. I did not do that. You did last night. And that's the thing. Karen was so under the influence. She didn't realize her approach, her demeanor, and, you know, just how she came off. Because she just wasn't thinking about it or whatever. And, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I just had to discuss the white elephant in the room. We get that. And Giselle was like, again, that's just the second time that I thought Giselle made sense. She said, you know, if we're going to be her friend, we have to be friendly. And you were not friendly in how you approached her. So, you know what I'm saying? You had valid points. You had very, very, very valid points. However, you need to apologize for your delivery to her. Oh, uh, well, fine. So, again, Giselle was right in saying, like, we have to either be her friend or no. But we can't say we are friend, but then don't be friendly when we're talking. Because Karen was extra. But it was it was a liquor. It was a liquor. And, again, I don't agree with anyone else saying, you have to agree with how I feel about your husband's situation in order for me to feel good. I can't do that because that's my husband. And so, at the end of the day... I have to support my husband 
um, in some sort of way. And I feel like anybody in that in that realm of I'm trying to protect my husband would do the exact same. But I digress. So we then see the following morning. No, no, no. The next later on that day, um, Karen and Ashley have a conversation. Karen, for the most part, is like, you know what? I never meant to come off harsh. I was not trying to come at you or whatever. I come in place of support. I am definitely on Team Ashley. I'm not trying to hurt you. However, you know what I'm saying? I want to com- to voice my concerns about how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And then she gives these statistics on, you know, assaults and rapes and all that stuff or whatnot. You know? And I'm like... Karen is attributing what she went through to this and I don't think that you should connect these two oh I don't I don't I don't I, I get what she was doing but I, I think these are two separate situations and I don't like how she again is wanting Ashley to kind of side with her and see her point of view over Ashley. Something like he, the the child is were dismissed. What do you want me to do? Like what I don't get which what, what should I just say my husband ain't shit in divorce? I that ain't what happened. That ain't what he told me, but I digress. Anyway, Karen brings him up. I don't think that he sh- should have done that interview or whatever. I think that was just too much. And Ashley's like, why would he not defend himself? He was having a business issue that was being held up. His name was being dragged through the mud. Like, why would he not defend himself and say his side of the story? And I'm like, right. Again, people don't like Ashley. I get People don't like asking. They think Michael is gay or whatever. But at the end of the day, no wife is going to say, yes, my husband is lying to y'all. If that ain't what they believe. If they believe their, it ain't nothing wrong with believe your husband, even if he lying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't, and again, I don't care. Anyway, so they talk. Well, what he needed to do was that going on that, on that news show is say sorry to you. For, bring, for, bring, for putting you through that. And she's like, Karen, he did. Like, we, you don't know what happened in my house because you never called and reached out to me to figure out anything. You know, she brings up how when Karen's parents died on both those separate occasions, she was out of the country, but she still reached out to Karen. So, however, Karen did not reach out to her when stuff with Michael was going on. And I'm like, because y'all, really, y'all not really friends. But they agreed to dis- disagree. Karen agrees to, which Karen apologizes. And because F, F, Ashley said, you know, you can't keep blaming me as I'm the only reason that we don't have a good friendship or whatever. Like, you have to take some accountability. I am. And let me say I'm sorry for A, B, C, D, E, F, and G or whatever. And they kind of make up. I, you know, again, it's this episode before the season finale and the reunion. I'm ready for the reunion, okay? That's what I'm ready for. But at the end of the day, I'm happy that Karen was able to express herself, able to apologize, and also able to accept her part in what she played in between the beef between her and Athie. And also, Athie's like, you know, I've apologized before to you for things I've done. Like, I've done that, but you can't keep blaming me as if I'm the only reason we're not friends. So, you know, it was what it was. And they say how they all have grown closer to the on this trip. Cool. We then see them go on a sunrise cruise on the last day. It looked really, really pretty. Where is it at? Um, all the ladies in a little, I guess, in a sailor outfit, so or not. So, um, the picture is huge, of course. I want to show y'all because, you know, I do think the trip... For the most part, was a success. I think even with the couple of little hiccups or whatever, they all have fun. You know, fun was had by all. Um, and that's how they ended the trip. You know, Robin jumped in the water talking about if I get hurt, Juan's gonna be very, very upset. Like you're gonna be, it's gonna be a hard thing to tell Juan. Okay. You know, I mean, I guess it would be. I ain't say he wouldn't care, but I'm like, girl. Okay, but yeah, they had a good time, and then we see when they get back to the house, Ashley brings up how, when they, when they get back to the States, she brings up how her breast was sore, she didn't get her period, so she thinks she's pregnant, but we know she's pregnant, you know what I'm saying? They then show her taking a pregnancy test, and they don't show those results. We know she 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 had a baby. I mean, like, what are y'all, what are y'all trying to, you can't, I mean, it ain't like we don't know she had a baby. I mean, what, what the fuck? Um, anyway, and then we see the preview for next episode, and honey, Katie looks good. Katie looked like she didn't got herself clean. <laughs> Cause I don't know what was wrong with Katie. I don't. And I'm not gonna say I do not. I'm gonna wait until the next episode and see what she say and handle it then. 
otherwise, look, I'm done, okay? If you have watched this whole video, I need you to put in, um, um, Scarface, uh, Serafina, which is a movie, if you don't know what it is, look it up, um, Pootie Tang, uh, <laughs> Pootie Tang, um, but I need a movie quote, a movie quote, and then at the end of your movie, at the end of the movie quote, put random letters and numbers. I don't know. I'm it's it's five for eight anymore. And I'm done. Peace.